All right, getting ready for our snowboard assignment. Uh, these are your assignment specifications, just to remind you uh, to have them here for you, so that way you can come back and revisit this tutorial if you think you forgot something. So to start off, assignment specs. So you're gonna wanna open up the snowboard design template that you downloaded from the Google Classroom. Make sure that you rename it with your snowboard design template underscore your last name. So it would be file, save as, snowboard design template with your last name. Um, the bottom of the snowboard needs to be more decorative or is generally more decorative than the top. It's not necessarily that way. My board is not like that. Uh, but both sides are related to the same design theme. Okay, you need to decide what your theme will be. You do not need to write it below. Uh, you need to decide what your theme will be, and that theme is going to be based off of one word. Uh, in the example I'm about to show you, once I get through these specifications, my word was farm, F-A-R-M, farm. Um, so it can be, you know, hunger, art, thunderbird, apple, sketchbook, text, moose, whatever as long as it's one word, okay, and appropriate for school. Uh, your second bit, the top of the board, must contain all the slots for the boot bindings. Uh, you'll need to use the Pathfinder palette to create the cutouts, so that way there's little holes poked in your design that looks like it's actually on the board. Uh, the top of the board must discreetly contain the company logo. So in our case, you're pretending to be a Burton designer, your logo needs to be small, somewhere on the top, as well as on the bottom of the board where it's larger and more prominent and dominant in the design. Please layer, 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 layer. The more layers you have, the more interesting your design will be to the viewer. Uh, so use multiple layers of information. Create a hierarchy in your design. What's most important? Make sure what is most important is what shows up the most, okay? Uh, so you don't want something that's integral to your design to be on the bottom of your layers, right? Make sure it's on the top. Choose and stick with a set color palette or color scheme. We started to do this with our worksheet. What I would recommend doing is uh, taking those files that you created for the color scheme and dragging them right into your Illustrator file. So that way when it comes time to create a shape right so we're doing our drawings and I want to draw or fill this with this color green I can simply sample it with my eyedropper and it'll fill with the rectangle so that's a good way to do that so that way you don't have to worry about typing in all these numbers all the time or saving swatches you can just draw a shape choose your eyedropper sample the color and there you go all right so next bit All right, so make sure you layer. Make sure you are sticking with your color palette. Make sure you download and list any of the fonts uh, that you feel fit your theme. So if you decide to use any cool fonts that say go with love and it's a curly, lovable, curly, you know, heart gushy font, uh, make sure that you download and install those fonts. If you don't know how to install the fonts on a Mac, watch the video tutorial um, in the miscellaneous tutorials playlist and it, I will show you how to install a font on your Mac. Now, once you get done with your snowboard design, please, please, please make sure that you select all of the text boxes and convert everything to outlines before uploading your Illustrator file to the Google Classroom. If you do not do this, when I download your file and open it on my Mac at home, I may not have that Suzy Q curly lovable font that you used to create your file with and my computer will convert all of that text to a default Arial font and it won't look right. So please make sure that you um, export or save all of your text as outlines. There is also a video tutorial in the Illust Miscellaneous Illustrator playlist, Miscellaneous Illustrator Tutorials playlist that walks you through the steps on how to export to outlines. Uh, you can use photos in your design, that's fine, but you must also use shapes or other vector objects that you've created in your uh, project. Now you can 
use Photoshop and tutorial back and forth with each other. Um, but you have to use some objects and shapes or pictures, flowers, curly cues, whatever, in your design that you've created in Illustrator. That is a mandatory. Uh, and then finally, you can use Photoshop alongside with Illustrator. So if you want to create um, some lighting effects, um, airbrushing, things like that, uh, you can do that in Photoshop, export your file as a PNG file, and use it in Adobe Illustrator, no problem. There's also a tutorial in the miscellaneous Photoshop tutorials playlist on YouTube that walks you through how to export a PSD file into a transparent PNG file. So those are your project specs, okay? You will have that, all of this is also in that Google Doc that we worked on right before we went away for a break uh, that we worked on during our last class. All right, so this is the beginning of my design. I want you to notice that I am using, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. unlock, there we go. I am using um, the 11 by 17 pre-made template that I've already set up for you, so all of you should have this. Um, there should be a layer that is called template, there's a layer that's called uh, your work, which I've now converted into my top and bottom. So I have several layers here, bottom, which is this, the top, which is this side, and then the template, which is all the black outlines where it says top and base or bottom here. I've added my color palette over here, and this is my design. All right. I'm going to actually get rid of those color palettes so I can zoom in because they're not actually the same color palettes. So the word I used was farm. And if you look at my image, can you guess why it's called farm? If you looked at an aerial image of a farm, which I believe I have some on my desktop here, maybe, there we go, okay, no, all right, so we'll just do this, there you go, right, it's a giant grid, um, they are not lined up perfectly with one another, which is great, because I don't do things very perfectly. Lots of different colors, but there's lots of greens, lots of browns, there's some yellow, right? Um, so I was inspired by where we live and decided to use the word farm. It's outside Miss Studio's comfort zone because I have never farmed, but I think I created a pretty cool design based on that word. To look at my image, it doesn't jump out at you uh, right away, but after the explanation, you can see that it's that grid system of all of the farm fields. And I've just repeated this pattern over and over and over again. And to create this pattern, all the only tool I used was my rectangle tool. All I did was create rectangles. That's it. I created, oops, I just created a bunch of rectangles that e created an equal square, right? So I created one by two inch rectangle and I created a two by two inch square. And we are going to make this a different color. And I created a four by one inch rectangle. I don't want to have an outline on these. And I dropped this so it's a different color. And let's see, what is this? One. I'm going to copy and paste this one. Copy and paste this one. And there we go, we've got a four by four inch square. Now, with this square already being made, group it together, copy and paste, and now all you need to do is rotate, is duplicate, 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 right? Copy and paste. Whoa. 
crap. All right, and then you can rotate like that. You can use your direct selection tool to select individual shapes, which will allow you to change the color up a little bit more, right? And you get a little bit more sporadic there in your layout, okay? But I created this really cool pattern simply based on using my rectangle tools, transforming them to be different sizes, and leaving some blank space where my yellow shows through because that is actually the color of the top of my snowboard. If you look, Right there, see? That is yellow. Okay, here's my yellow. Right? So that's just yellow. So all I did was use squares and rectangles. Um, now, in the next tutorial I'm going to show you, and, and it's going to be different for everybody's design, which is why I'm not really walking you through it, but you can do something as simple as that. You can use circles. You can play with the gradients. You can make things look three-dimensional. Go up in here and use your um, artistic effects gallery, right? 3D effects. Distort and transform. Remember puffer and bloat. That's awesome. Tweak and twist and zigzag. These are all tools that you can utilize. Warp, arc, fisheye, right? That you can utilize to create um, your project with. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a clipping path. So if you notice, my pattern goes beyond my snowboard. All these red dots is actually the pattern that I drew. And then I used a clipping path, like a cookie cutter, to just go whoop and chop off all of the edges that went beyond the boundaries of my snowboard, which makes my design go right up to the edge without having to worry about it going off the edge. Um, so I'll show you how to make a clipping path in another tutorial. So why don't you guys get going on that? I'll be around if you need any help.